Hey, 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 what's up, guys? What's up? Hey, uh, I was just, uh, uh, practicing for tonight's online dance party. Are y'all ready? It's day five. We've made it five days, but today's the last day of VBS. I'm a little bummed. But I'm excited because we have a whole bunch of stuff planned, including tonight's online dance party. Your mom and dad are gonna be given a code for a Zoom meeting where we have our online dance party scheduled at six o'clock tonight. Now, I hope you're ready to have some fun. You're gonna to get to see Pastor Tony's Funky Chicken. It's the best I've ever seen. I mean, you gotta ask him specifically, Pastor Tony, do the Funky Chicken, and he'll show you what it's all about. Speaking of what it's all about, it is day five. We have had four amazing big answers and today we have probably the most important big answer are you ready to find out what it is okay boys and girls here's our big answer for today you can live for God by loving others and our memory verse we've had all week long you've got the moves down I don't even need to show you but I'm gonna because well we've gone this far I feel like I need to do it just for old time's sake all right are y'all ready let us keep looking to Jesus. He is the one who started the journey of faith. And he is the one who completes the journey of faith. Hebrews 12, 2. Awesome job, guys. And our life app. Y'all remember what it is? We've been saying it all week long. It's about faith. Trusting what you can't see because of what you can see. And all week long, what a journey we've been on. We've been learning how to focus. Focus on what we can see and that we can hear from God and that we can talk to others about what we believe. And we can pray anytime, anywhere, about anything. And today, we're gonna learn how we can show that we live for God by loving others. Our Bible story is gonna come from the book of Matthew where Jesus is talking about the greatest commandment. And it's probably one of the most profound and important things we're ever going to learn about what Jesus was telling us. So I can't wait for y'all to see that. But before we do, challenge time. That's right. Check out this sheet in your daily bag. Look for ways that you can love others as God loves them. One way I can show love to someone this week is, and fill this heart in. Draw a picture. Write down something that you think you can show someone you love them. Maybe like this young fella here, he probably had some flowers for a girl he was sweet on. I know that when I'm sweet on my wife, I give her flowers and candy. And she loves Whataburger, so you can't go wrong showing love by getting her Whataburger. But what is it you're gonna do to show someone you love them? Take a few minutes, draw something or write something. And then after you're done, we're gonna hang out with the rest of my virtual VBS friends and see what all they have planned for you this today. All right, guys, I'll catch you in a little while. Hello, everyone, I'm Kelly, and we are back and ready to focus. Okay, we've discovered lots of ways that we can take a closer look and grow in our relationship with God. Let's see if you can unscramble these words and remember all the different ways you can focus on God. You can focus on what you can see. 
nice. <laughs> you can remember that our big, powerful God created everything and everyone we see, and he cares about what's going on in each of our lives. What else? Well, you can hear from God. You can do that by reading the Bible, whether that's on an app, on a tablet, or even in a book like this one. You can follow God's big story throughout history and discover what it means for your life today. You can talk with others about what you believe. You can ask questions and talk about God with other people who follow him. Maybe they've discovered something about God that can help you too. Or maybe as you talk about him, you can discover something new together. How else can we focus on God? You can pray anytime, anywhere, about anything. You can talk to God and be honest with him. Remember, he is always there for you, no matter what. We can do all these things to focus on God and discover more about him. And the best part is, we can choose to do them every single day. We can make a habit of living differently and focusing on God no matter what's going on around us. Today, we'll talk about one more awesome way we can focus on God that's all about the way we act every single day. <gasps> but first, jump on your feet because it's time for us to put our focus on God and worship Him together.
guys, it's me, Kyle. I didn't know if you'd recognize me without the lights on and with the flashlight, but today we are playing flashlight tag in the lab, which means I might have to- Kyle! Oh, be right back. Where are you? <laughs> Hi guys, have any of you seen Kyle? I'm trying to catch him. You're never gonna catch me! I heard you! I heard you! Oh, wrong way. Oh. Oh. Kyle! Kyle! <laughs> Thanks for that. Man, it is crazy back there. Everything is so dark. You can't see anything. It's like it's like a maze in the lab. Uh, I mean, you're, you're tripping over things. You're running. Oh! Things. Oh! <laughs> I better, uh, yeah, I better go check on her. <sighs> okay, sorry about that. Um, okay, where was I? I was uh, talking about lights, flashlight tag. Where else? I am? Got it! Oh! <laughs> Are you okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm fine. Uh, Wilson, Wilson just got me. <laughs> I'm the king. <laughs> okay, uh, king. Hey, do you, do you mind uh, putting the spotlight on me real quick? Okay, yeah. Perfect. Light illuminates everything that we see and even some things that we can't. So today on A Closer Look, we're talking about just that. Stay tuned. <laughs> Samantha? Samantha? When we think about light, we usually think about lamps or the sun, but there's so many different ways to use light, like, uh, No spoilers, please. Kyle, I am your friend. <laughs> <laughs> Light isn't just something out of bulbs or from the sun. Light is also lasers. Oh. <laughs> but what good do lasers even do? Well, they look cool. But looking cool isn't a reason to be talking about it on this show. I mean, this is science that we're dealing with here, people. What's the practical application? First, uh, the fact that you care about the content of this show means the world to me, so thank you. And second, lasers can be used in so many different ways. It can help uh, shape people's eyes so they can see better. Oh, like uh, LASIK. Yeah, you know, my dad had that done before we couldn't even read a stop sign, but now we can read the newspaper over my mom's shoulder when they're in separate rooms. Wow, exactly. <laughs> and there's also LIDAR. Ooh! What's that? Well, it's basically a radar that uses lasers. So we use light to scan entire areas to take an incredibly detailed photograph that we normally couldn't see with the naked eye. Uh, check it out. Oh, look, an entire ancient city covered by trees for hundreds of years, and we discovered it using LIDAR. See, the city couldn't be seen because the trees had covered it up, but we found it with light using LIDAR. Plus, they sound super cool. Yeah, they do. <laughs> also, because high-powered lasers are accurate over long distances, we can measure things like elevation. Very, very... Houston, we have a problem. Very accurately. <laughs> But that's some of the small picture stuff about light. But what about the big picture stuff, like about supporting life on our planet? Well, we're gonna talk about all of that right after this. I will, yeah, yeah.
Well, hello there. Who are you looking at? You looking at me? Huh? You looking at me? Are we rolling? Oh, um. <clears throat> hello, I'm Kellen, and we've been having a lot of fun taking a closer look at the world around us. So I have a mirror here, but it's not just any mirror. It's a two-way mirror. The way it works is that one person can see through it from the side where it's darker, and the person on the other side sees a reflection of themselves when the light is on them. So here's me, but when I stand behind it and change the lighting, can you see me now? Cool, right? I'm seeing a reflection of myself, but if we change the lights again, I see you. Cool, right? All right, well, we'll come back to that later. So our story today actually comes from two different books of the Bible. Now, they're both pretty famous passages. The first is from the book of Matthew, where the Pharisees are asking a question of Jesus. First, let me explain who the Pharisees were. They were a group of religious leaders who tried to honor God by following a bunch of religious rules. The problem was they focused so much on following the rules that they didn't love God or other people very well. They also didn't like how Jesus claimed to be the son of God, and they didn't like how everyone seemed to be following after him. When one of the Pharisees asked his question, he was really trying to put Jesus to the test and see if Jesus might say something that would get him in trouble. So he asked Jesus this question, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Now the law he was referring to was the law in the Old Testament that had lots of rules. Lots of rules for all kinds of things like what kind of work you could do on certain days of the week or making sure you covered your water wells or to not eat owls. Seriously, it's in there, check it out. So Jesus answers them and says, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Love him with all your mind. This is the first and most important commandment and the second is like it. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Everything that is written in the law and the prophets is based on these two commandments. Jesus basically sums up the law with those four verses. There are more than 600 rules in the Old Testament, and Jesus says here what you need to do. Love God, love people. That's it. Crazy, right? But how do we love someone? I mean, what is love? The Apostle Paul had some things to say about love in the book of 1 Corinthians. Paul said, love is patient, love is kind. Love does not dishonor others. He also says that love does not look out for its own interests. Love is full of joy. It always protects, it never gives up, love never fails. Now, that's a lot of beautiful words about love, but what does it look like in our everyday life? What does it look like for love to be patient? Okay, what if your little brother or sister has destroyed the Lego tower you built for the third or fourth time? Showing them love might mean that you're patient and that you don't get angry at them. What does it look like for love to be kind? Well, maybe there's a new kid at school or at camp, and maybe they don't look or sound like you or any of your friends. It may not be easy, but to show that person love means to show kindness. Invite them to sit with you at lunch or play with you at recess, even if your other friends don't want to. What does it look like for love to never fail? That's a big one, right? To say that love never fails? Well, I don't think Paul was saying that love is always easy. It's not. And sometimes we might feel that love has failed when you try to show someone kindness or patience and they make fun of you or they ignore you. But I think maybe Paul is saying that we can't give up. And if we continue to show people love, it will change them and change us, even if we can't see it immediately. I think it's also good to remember that God is described as love and what God did by sending us his son Jesus will never fail. Even when we mess up, God still loves us, and we can show that same love to others. Here, let me show you something. So we're back at this two-way mirror. Remember that it works because of light. When you light up one side of the mirror and lower the light on the other side, 
the person that has the light shining on them is able to be seen. So when I shine the light on myself, I can look in the mirror and see myself. Hey, Kellen. But when we turn the light down on ourselves and we turn the light up on the other side of the mirror, we turn the light on others. We turn the focus on other people and we can see who they are and what they need. When we take a closer look at others, we're able to see them as God sees them and live for God by loving them. Pretty incredible, right? So, as you go home and as you meet new friends in the next few weeks, remember that you can live for God by showing others God's love. And keep a lookout because there are so many things to learn about God when you take a closer look. I'll see you guys next time. Love is in the air, la 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 la. Oh, <laughs> what's up boys and girls? I'm just kidding. We're not really talking about that romantic type of love. We're talking about a God love, a love that's the most amazing love of all. God's love is selfless love. It puts others first. That's the kind of love we're talking about today. I think it's awesome how Jesus answered the Pharisees on what's most important. Let's pretend all this stuff on this table represent the different commandments in God's law. The Pharisees were saying, hey, which one's most important? Now, to, they're all important, but to carry all of them individually would be pretty hard, right? Now, let's pretend that this backpack represents God's love. Jesus told him, he said, listen, here's the deal. If you love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength, you do that, and then you love other people as you love yourself, I'm telling you what, all the laws of the prophets are wrapped up into these two things. That's what love does, right? Wraps it all up and makes it easy for us to understand. You see, the principle is this, is if we love God and love others, it's going to take care of all the rest. And that's what Jesus wanted the Pharisees to understand that day. You know, Jesus set the most amazing example in this, that when he died on the cross, he did it for you and me. He put us first instead of himself, and he paid the price for our sins. The coolest thing is, is that when we ask Jesus to, into our hearts, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit comes and dwells within us. And it says that God's love fills our hearts. Now, is God's love there just so that we hold on to it? No, right? God gives us his love so that we then in turn can take his love and share it with others. That's what we want you to learn today. We want you to learn that you can live for God by loving God others. God's love's inside of us so that we can give it to others. Let's pretend this cup here represents somebody else. And God has given us love to show to others, right? And the truth of the matter is, is there's a whole lot more love inside of you than you think. God fills us with love and not just love to love people who maybe it's easy to love, like, I don't know, our best friend who always shares her toys with us but to be able to love people who maybe are kind of grumps sometimes or hard to get along with. God gives us love for those kind of people too, right? And the cool thing is this, is as we share God's love with other people, their hearts become open to Jesus and asking Jesus to come into their hearts, right? God wants to use your words, your actions. God wants to use your hands and feet and he wants to ha have you spread his love with others. And the cool thing is, is as we do that, we become a part of the kingdom of God. We're advancing the kingdom of God. And now we're making a big difference for him, boys and girls. Now, I understand it's not always easy. Sometimes we just want to think about ourselves first instead of putting other people first, right? That's why it's so important that we practice what we've been learning all week long, that we focus on God. As we do that, as we stay connected to him, we're going to find he's going to continue to give us more and more love to pour out to others. And boys and girls, as we do that, we're going to make a big difference for him as mighty kids of God. That's what we want to do. We want to live for God by loving others. Let me pray for you today as we practice that in our lives. God, we love you so much. And I thank you that you've given us the ability 
to experience your love through your son, Jesus. And Lord, we know that you didn't give us that love just so we can hold on to it. You gave it to us so we can share it with others. Use our hands and feet. Use our words and actions. Use us, God, to make a difference for you, that we represent you by showing love to people. God, we thank you that you've loved us, and we ask that you help us to love others in return. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, boys and girls, we're going to head back to the, cl the, the Closer Look Lab. While you guys do that, I'm going to keep on spreading God's love. We'll catch you later. Do you ever wonder how we got this amazing world around us? It's all because of four little words. Let there be. Oh, I know this one. Oh, light. <laughs> light is the main source for life on our planet. Light is the sole source for food creation on our planet. For instance, we need light to grow our fruits and our vegetables. But have you ever wondered why? It's all because of a little process known as photosynthesis. Here's how it works. The sun shines on us, and the plants use that energy to turn carbon dioxide, which we cannot breathe, into oxygen. And oxygen is what we breathe. So next time you take a deep breath, think a plant. Because plants are pretty important. Thanks, plants. We need light to see, yes, but light comes in a spectrum that makes our world beautiful. For instance, if we didn't have this various spectra of light, our world might look like. I don't like it. Oh man, I got Neapolitan. How am I gonna know which one's the chocolate? But because we do have different kinds of light, our world looks like. Hmm, I figured it out. <laughs> From clean solar energy to maintaining the Earth's temperature to letting us know when to go to sleep at night, light plays a huge role in our everyday life. Everything we do here at A Closer Look requires light. After all, we need light to take a closer look. Oh. Hey, buddy. <laughs> Did you uh, leave in any ice cream for me? Ah, uh, we left you a little strawberry. <laughs> a plant that gets the right amount of sunlight will thrive and grow. <laughs> I am so full of sun energy, I could not be more psyched. <laughs> but if the plant doesn't get the right amount of light, what? People can be the same way. Sometimes when a light isn't shining on someone, we can't see the details of them in their life. That's why we gotta do everything we can to light others up, shining a light on others and showing them love. Well, uh, hey, Wilson, can, can you fix that spotlight, please? Got it. When I shine a light on Samantha, I can see how enthusiastic she is. And I can also see that she likes it when others are just as enthusiastic as her. <laughs> I know that she gets excited about even my craziest idea. <laughs> Way to bring the fun, Samantha! Oh, hey, thanks, Kyle! <laughs> and when I shine a light on Wilson, I can see how smart he is and how he makes all of us smarter. It's true. <laughs> and I won't let his grumpiness get in the way of telling me so. Oh. Oh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing to shine a light on your friends? How are you seeing them better? Well, guys, that's it for this week. 
Thank you for joining us and for taking a, a closer, closer look. look. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I want to. I wanna... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, High five again. Ready? High five! You're doing it! <laughs> Charlie! I did not secure that, guys. I am so sorry. <laughs> This is my faith, this is my focus All of my days, I know where my hope is I live it loud, I shout the chorus Because I know, oh you're always for us And even when it's hard for me to see, to see I will trust in you, I will believe, believe And even when it's hard for me to see, to see I will trust in you, I will believe and keep on looking, looking, looking to you For where I'm going, knowing you go there too I'll keep on looking, looking, looking to you I'll fix my eyes on you Hi there. Wow, I cannot believe it is our last day. We are learning for ways to love people like Jesus loves us. So what we're going to be making is a pinwheel. Uh, the, get, the supplies that you are going to need is you're going to need your square, you're going to need your um, Chanel wire, your straw, you're gonna need two pony beads, and some scissors. So first things first that I want you to do is I want you to cut along the lines right here on your square. Make sure do not cut past the line. You're only going to cut past, you're only going to cut to the end of the line. Um, and you are going to have a hole. Mrs. Vanessa's square is a little bit, um, I made my hole a little bit too big, so I kind of had to tape it off and make my hole a little bit smaller. Um, so let's go ahead, start your cuts. All 
right, so here Miss Vanessa has already done her cuts. And what I want you to do is you're going to get the corner that has the hole. Every er, There's only one corner on each side that has one hole. So you're going to get, get the corner that has the hole and you're going to center it in the middle, just like so. And you're going to overlap all of the holes. Miss Vanessa has to set hers down on paper to make it actually may need some tape too. Sorry, I should have said that earlier. Just so that way this stays, because it's having a hard time staying right now. and get your Chanel wire and strip it through. You're gonna get one pony bead on this side. On the front, you're gonna put your pony bead on the side and what I want you to do is, actually, let me, let's make it a little bit easier. Get your, get your Chanel wire first and just kind of loop it through, loop it back through so you're going right back through that, that piece of. I'm gonna loop mine twice, just so that I know it's going to stay. Okay. Now I'm going to loop it, loop it back through just like so. So it's going to look like this so far. You're gonna get your other pony bead, put it through your wire. You're gonna get your straw. You're gonna get this end. Let's, and let's go ahead and we're gonna just circle it all around, wrap the entire thing. So I want to add a few hearts on mine. So if you want to get a crayon or a marker, you can go ahead and add some hearts. just so that way I make sure this stain because it's being difficult with me. Okay, just like so. Let's add a few more hearts. All right, there we go. Okay, so what you can do is just take this outside and you can watch it spin and let it be a reminder when you see those hearts spinning to go outside and love on people as much as God loves on you. Thank you for joining us and I hope to see you all next year. Jesus said that the most important thing you can do is to love God and love others. You can do that by treating others the way you want to be treated. Think of others instead of just thinking of yourself. Put your focus on what God has done for you and then live your life differently because of it. You can live for God by loving others. You can put the focus on other people and share God's love with them every day. Here's a question for you. How do you focus on others? I bet you've got some great ideas about that. Talk about them with whoever is there in your house or apartment with you. <laughs> I've had a great time with you guys these last few days. 
Thanks for hanging out and joining us here at Focus. Hey everybody and welcome back. I have had the best week I've ever had with you guys. It has been amazing. I am so ready to focus on all these things that's gonna help me get to know God better and the plan he has for my life. And I hope y'all have gotten something out of it too. That now you know that we can focus our eyes to things we can see. We can focus our ears to hear from God. We can focus our voice to talk with others about what we believe. And we can focus our thoughts to pray with God anytime, anywhere, about anything. Guys, I hope you've had a phenomenal week. And I kind of, I'm gonna miss y'all. There's just one thing, if you'll do it with me, for old time's sake, if we'll go over the big answer, our memory verse and our life app just one more time. Is that okay? Okay, because our life app is faith. Trusting in what you can't see because of what you can see. And our memory verse comes from Hebrews 12, 2. Now, one more time. Let's do it all together. Let us keep looking to Jesus. He is the one who started the journey of faith. And he is the one who completes the journey of faith. Hebrews 12, 2. And our big answer, where we take the entire message and we roll it into a little itty bitty 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 sentence is, you can live for God by loving others. There's just one other challenge for y'all to do today, and it is, what is love? Well, in the Bible, 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 7, is the best example of what everything love is. Now along the outside here, you will see hearts with words that you can plug in as you read the verses of 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 7. I'll give you the first one. Love is patient. Now as you read the rest of the scripture, you can plug in the words that fill in the blanks. And when it's all said and done, you'll have an awesome idea of what love is. Now, just a couple of addendums, a few little final talking points, if you will. Remember tonight at 6 p.m. on Zoom, mom and dad will log you in and you can join in the FFC Kids Online Dance Party. Don't forget to ask Pastor Tony about his funky chicken dance. Also, we hope you have had an awesome and amazing time this week. We really hope that focusing on God is gonna help you get through the rest of this summer and through the rest of your life. And know that everything that you do with God, you can trust Him. Even if you can't see Him, trust Him because of what you can see. Finally, it's discussion question time. If you will, take out that sheet. And we have four last questions we want you to discuss with your family and friends, neighbors, anyone you want to. You ready to review them? How can you tell when someone genuinely loves you? What are some things that distract you from loving others? Who do you know that's a good example of someone who loves others? And what was your favorite part of VBS this week? From the popsicles to the crazy things that we did with hair and our PJs. So many awesome memories, guys. I am looking forward to seeing y'all all very soon. And here's to looking forward to next year's VBS. All right, guys, have a fantastic summer. We will see you around. Have an awesome day, and we look forward to seeing you tonight.